Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Grotner MZ32 Sailplane Programming Part 2. This is Ollie from Flight Comp. And I think in this video we're going to get into the camber settings in the software and we'll do some uh, flight mode delays and possibly some uh, camber to elevator mix, otherwise known as uh, snap flap. So uh, here we go, let's get into it. So we have our test model uh, pulled up in the software and in order to get to the menu to adjust the camber for the different flight modes we're just going to go to the function tab and we're going to select phase trim right up here and this is where you can adjust um, the ailerons, elevator and flap basically presets for each um, flight mode that you have. Now, here's where we get into, in my opinion, the single biggest drawback of this radio and why I think actually at this moment the MZ-24 is actually a superior radio for sailplanes compared to the MZ-32. Because this radio slaves both ailerons together and both flaps together. So if you were to put a uh, input in, a value, a preset for camber, it's going to move both ailerons and both flaps at the same time. You cannot independently adjust each surface. And I'm telling you right now, no matter how perfect your servo installation is, and no matter how perfect your linkages are set up, if everything's near to being identical, you're still going to get some variation in your flight surfaces when you put camber into your program. Uh, this is this is really annoying and I don't see how in the world uh, Grotner could overlook this on a thousand dollar radio. Um, they say they're gonna fix this in, uh, in an update coming soon but I don't even know how they released this radio with with this kind of programming in it. I guess they weren't targeting sailplane guys at all or they didn't have any input from sailplane pilots. But anyway, let's let's go on and let's do the best we can with what we have to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up my test model and turn it on. And we're going to go and put some uh, camber uh, presets in for our different flight modes. Okay, we're in our phase trim. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that uh, in the group setting that you have set these to the list view so that these uh, inputs are independent for each flight mode. So as you can see, we're in normal flight mode, so I'm just going to click into, let's say, thermal. Speed. thermal. And then we can select a value and input it. And as you can see, the surface is moving. So I'm just going to give it an, an exaggerated value of 50%, just so we can cl clearly see the surface is moving. So we'll hit OK. And then we'll go to flap. And we'll try to match our flap to our aileron. So we were about 30 right there. So we hit, we'll hit OK. And then if we click out of thermal, normal. you see our surfaces go back to normal, normal mode. Thermal. Normal. Now let's zoom in on the model and see how close our surfaces are to being lined up with each other. It's sort of hard to tell. But this side's lined up, and then if I move over to this side, the aileron's up a little bit, and actually this aileron is not as far down as the other side, so we have less total camber in this side of the wing than, than this side. Now that's going to be hard to adjust, you know, because we don't have independent control of our surfaces. So there's sort of a workaround that some guys have suggested on like RC groups, um, and they claim that the the phase trim feature of the MZ32 is is okay, and you can work around some of the problems. But you know they fail to mention that those that they are actually sponsored by Gropner, so um, those guys are just trying to make uh, you know make up for the shortcomings of the radio. Now. I really like the radio. I like the hardware. I like the the way it feels. And in general, I like the software layout. So I'm not trying to bash the radio at all. 
But I just think for a thousand dollars, you know, you could spend a thousand dollars on a Grotner, a Futaba. Uh, uh, you could spend a lot less on an FR Sky. You could spend a little more and get a Jetty, and you're gonna get way more features, especially when it comes to a camber settings for gliders. So, again, I don't want to bash Grotner or the radio, but I just think it's a uh, it's a bit of a fail at this point, you know, and unless they come up with a, a software update that addresses this issue. So, okay, I'm going to show you what the little workaround that some people suggest is, okay? Okay, let's go back to uh, the base menu. And then we're going to go to servo set. And then we're going to select one of our channels so we can do right aileron. And we're going to hit detail. And up here we have a, uh, a balance menu. Now, what this is going to do for us basically is allow us kind of to put the throw of the uh, channel on a curve so as to try to balance out all four of your surfaces to get them to line up uh, in, your, um, in your camber settings. Okay, and theoretically this could work, but you know, this also affects your general uh throws as well. So this this balance feature is going to uh, affect the throw and all throws in all of your um in all of your settings. Now this balance feature it has a very narrow window. Uh, so what I mean by that is to adjust these points up and down you're only adjusting maybe 10% of the total throw of the servo. It's a very small, uh, small window uh, of operation. So I found that in some cases you can't even get this to balance out right to get your surfaces to line up. I'll, I'll just show you a, a model that I've uh, previously programmed and you can see what it sort of looks like to try to get the surfaces lined up. Okay, here's a program that I've already done for uh, a model that I've actually flown. And we'll just go to uh, left aileron and I'll show you sort of what I had to do to get the surfaces somewhat close. So here's that balance menu that I was talking about and you can see the crazy inputs I had to put in. Now if we go back, we can try to look at some of the other channels. Let's look at a flap here. Look at that guy. That guy's all over the place. And you know, my installation of my servos and linkage is pretty damn good. You know, it's, it's, as, it's as close as I could get it. So, uh, you know, you definitely can't say that my servo installation was poor. Let's look at another one. Look at that guy there. Look how crazy that one looks. And again, this might look crazy on the screen here, but it's, it's just affecting a very small window of the throw. How, how, can we get around, how can we get around this camber situation and try to get our surfaces as close as possible? Theoretically, what you would do is you would make sure that every single surface... Let's take the ailerons, that this aileron moved up and down exactly the same amount as this aileron moves up and down, right? Which you should do in your, in your general setup. So you could take a ruler and put it on the surface and let's say make sure this aileron moves up and down 10 millimeters. This aileron moves up and down 10 millimeters. Then you'd go to your flaps and you would say, okay, let's say this flap moves up and down 5 millimeters or 10 millimeters or whatever. And you've ensured that every surface is going the same amount of total travel. And then you could do some measurements and use the balance feature to let's say you would move your aileron to 50% deflection and see how much it's moving. Let's say it's moving five millimeters. Then you'd go over to the other side at 50% deflection. And let's say if it was moving six millimeters one way and four millimeters the other, you could use the balance feature to balance it out at 50% deflection. And then you could do the same thing at 25% deflection, right? So you're kind of smoothing out the, th the throws and making sure that the surfaces are moving the same amount throughout the entire range of travel. But let's talk about camber settings because when we're talking about camber settings in a glider, we're only talking about two, three, four, five millimeters of throw, right? And if your total throw is, let's say, 15 millimeters one way and 20 millimeters the other way, that's not a huge percentage of the total throw. So if the balance menu is only affecting, let's say 10% of the throw, in some cases it's not gonna be enough to line up your surfaces in your camber settings. 
So that's just the, you know, in my opinion, that's the biggest shortcoming of this radio. You cannot really, you cannot overcome it. The radio needs a software update. Um, sometimes you get lucky with a model. For example, I programmed one model with this radio. The surfaces were pretty close. I programmed another model and I couldn't get them to line up at all. And again, I, I would consider myself an expert at, uh, you know, installing servos and linkages and sailplanes. So it's definitely not my install. That's for sure. Okay, well, I told you about the the uh, the, the biggest down uh, shortcoming of the radio. Let's just move on. Let's just you know forget about that, get past that, and 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 move ahead with the uh, camber settings and some of the other things we were going to look at in in this part. Okay, we're back in the uh, phase trim menu, and we're still in the thermal mode, but we can just click out of that Normal. and click into a different mode. Let's say this is speed, and we can adjust our values in speed. We'll go 30% there and hit OK. And then let's try to get the flaps to match. Let's say 45% there. We'll hit OK. So now we have, if you look at the surface, normal. we have normal, speed, speed normal. And then we have a thermal mode. Normal. Let's see, what else do we need to do? Okay, let's do a launch setting. So let's say this is an F3J launch, so we need a lot of uh, camber on the wing. So we'll go to, let's say, 70% on the ailerons. And we'll go to, looks like about 45 is going to do it on the flaps. We'll hit OK. So now we have a preset for, like, let's say an F3J launch. Going straight to speed for the zoom portion of the launch. Then clicking into normal. And then we have a thermal setting. And again, for as many uh, flight modes as you have, you can, you can put these uh, camber settings into your uh, model. And then we have also in each in each setting we have an elevator preset as well, so you can actually uh, trim the model to fly how you like in each setting. So, for example, for speed, you could put a couple of clicks of down in it or whatever, uh, and you can obviously put some elevator adjustment in on your launch setting for like an F3J launch. So, in, in general, this is a very simple menu to use. Now, how simple would it be if instead of two you know buttons here we had four? or however many surfaces we had on our wing, and we could adjust each one of them independently. This is a very simple menu to use. I like the layout. It, it makes sense visually. Um, it's a lot easier to use than you know some other brands of radios. So if we just had more adjustments here, it would be just about perfect. Okay, one thing I want to talk about is putting delays into your flight modes because if you're flying your sailplane around, let's say in the speed mode, and it's trimmed, your elevator's trimmed to keep the nose down and to keep the glider moving, and then you click into, let's say, a normal mode or thermal mode, if that's a very abrupt change, your model's going to uh, ex experience uh, drastic uh, uh, pitch changes. So when you put a delay into your flight mode, it sort of smooths out all the transitions between your flight modes. Not huge delays, not 5, 10 seconds, but just a couple of seconds. And in some cases, you don't want any delays. For example, if you're in an F3J launch mode, and you're going to zoom at the top of your launch, and you want to go into a reflex, you want that to be instantaneous. You don't want a delay there. So let's figure out how we can uh, put some delays in our flight modes. All right, let's uh, let's put some uh, delays in our flight modes. Um, to do that, we're going to go to the menu icon, and we're going to go to function, and then we're going to go to phase set right here, and we have our basically our phase menu that you know we use to create our flight modes. And um, in the third column here, or I guess it would be the fourth, um, we have a delay option. So uh, we can put some delays in and see how they affect uh, the model when we hit some switches. So let's go to thermal, and let's put a one-second delay in there and see what that does. Thermal. Normal. Okay. Thermal. So when we, 
when we're in normal and we click thermal, now one second sounds like a short period of time, but as, as you can see when we hit the switch, it's actually creating a very smooth normal. transition. Okay, now I don't, I also want it to be uh, smooth and somewhat delayed when I go back to normal. normal. So let's go to normal and put a uh, one second delay there as well. We have a delay into thermal normal. and a delay out of thermal, so that's working great. And let's see, we have a speed mode. Now, I actually don't want a delay going from launch, launch to speed. speed. So what I'll do normal. is I'll put a delay into launch. I'll just do a one second delay. And then when we go to speed, speed, we don't have a delay. Normal. But when we go from speed to normal, normal, we do get a delay. Now when we go from normal speed. to speed, I would like a delay, but we can't get a delay because there is no delay, you know, there is no in or out delay. So, you know, on, on my previous radios, I've had a delay both ways where you can delay in, in, in a flight mode and out of a flight mode. So I guess that's another small gripe with the radio. I wish I had an in and out delay. But we did the best we could. Normal. We're in normal. Thermal. Thermal. normal. Back to normal. Speed. We go quickly into speed, which I wish we could delay. Launch, launch we have a delay. And then from launch speed. to speed, we don't have a delay. Normal. Okay, and for landing mode... I actually do put a uh, delay on my landing mode too, but I, I generally keep it very small. So we could do like a half second delay. Landing, normal, landing, normal, landing, normal. Okay, so that that's very very easy to do, very very quick to set up the delays on the flight modes. Um, now let's look at uh, some snap flap or uh, in camber to elevator mixing. All right, let's try to put some uh, snap flap in to our glider. Everything's still turned on. So we'll go to function. And what do we have? Wing set and wing to tail. It might be wing to tail. Okay, here we go. Elevator to aileron. This is what we're going to want to start out with. So we'll turn it on. There's a control feature, but I have a feeling that... Uh, you know, the flight mode will just activate what we want. So we're not going to um, play with the control feature yet because I don't think we're going to need it. So uh, otherwise, you could assign a switch to control this feature. So let's just click on the airplane and let's put some values in here. I think we're going to need uh, possibly a negative value. So let's just go, again, I'm over-exaggerating these. Let's go 30%. We're in normal mode. I'll pull the elevator and see what happens. I don't know if you can see here, but as I pull the elevator up, we get some camber. So that's what we want. And then if you wanted a uh, reflex when you push down, you could put that value in here. Let's try 30% there. Okay, no, actually it's going to be a negative again. So we'll go negative 30. Okay, so now when we push down, we have some reflex happening. So that's great. Uh, and then let's, um, oh, aha, I think we're going to have to click this to be able to get what we want to have this independent for each flight mode. Okay, so let's see. So I'm in normal mode. I'm going to click into the thermal. thermal. And yeah, it's not working. So perfect. It's independent for each flight mode. Okay, let's go back and let's try to match the flaps. Okay, turn this on. We'll click the airplane, and again, group, we're going to hit that. We're going to make sure it's independent for each flight mode, and let's just put a value in here. Let's see what happens. Wrong way. There we go. I don't know if you can see this, but now we have ailerons and flaps going down when we pull up on the elevator, and we're going to have to put uh, a value in for rate B. So let's do that. Let's 
try, we'll just do 25 again, if we can find it. And we have our flap and aileron both going up when we push down if we want to have some reflex when we push down. So that's in our normal mode and we could, you know, go ahead and just rifle through all our flight modes and uh, assign some values. Let's try thermal mode. So we'll turn it on. I think we needed a negative here if I remember correctly. Nope, positive. This is flaps, so remember that. Flaps. We'll just go 30. We got, our, we got our flaps working when we pull up. And I'm not going to put any reflex in, but we'll go back and we'll do the aileron. Uh, elevator to aileron. Turn it on because we're in a different mode. And let's put a value in here to match the flaps. Looks like 40 should do it. Now we have snap flap in thermal mode, and you can adjust these for all your flight modes. So that's a very easy feature to use. However, again, I am going to say, if we go back, there's only one adjustment for both pairs of ailerons and both pairs of flaps, which, you know, this is, this is a negative to this radio. This sh really should have... When you, you know, an elevator to aileron adjustment for both left and right elevator or ailerons independently. Same with the flap. You should be able to adjust each flap independently. So when you pull your elevator and you get camber, a camber input, you should be able to adjust that in the input per surface and these should not be slaved together. I really hope somebody at Gropner is watching this and they make the changes to the radio because, uh, you know, otherwise I'm, I'm not going to be using this radio. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm giving you my honest, uh, my honest input here. Okay, so we um, we put some camber in some of our flight modes. Uh, we put flight mode delays in, and we put some snap flap in. Um, basically, we've covered a majority of the sailplane programming. If this was a F5J model, we'd have to do some uh, some work to the motor, maybe to get uh, uh, throttle cuts and things like that. And I think I'll do that in a separate video. I think one thing we could try to do in this video as well is um, try to get the camber on a slider. Try to get uh, the camber variable on a slider here. So let's let's dive into that and see if we can get that to work. All right, let's see how we can uh, go about trying to set up variable camber uh, on our airplane. And um, it can be sort of tricky. Uh, I made a, uh, a video as an addendment to the first programming video I made, uh, programming part one. So um, I think I might call it 1.5. It's really important you watch that video um, before you set up your model and before you try to set up variable camber. Um, there's some really tricky things in the control set menu and servo directions and things like that. So watch that video first and you'll get a better understanding uh, about how to get variable camber into your model. But basically what you want to do is set up another uh, flight mode that you want to use the variable camber in. So I've done that here. I've created another flight mode. I've called it camber. Um, I put it below the normal flight mode so the priority is not very high. And I have assigned the uh, left side lever for for camber you could also assign the right side let's say if you're flying f5j and and the left side is your throttle you could put your camber on uh, the right side or you could even put it on a, a rotary knob or whatever whatever you'd like in my case i have it uh, on the left side here and uh, it's just simply uh this is just to activate that flight mode so it's just a off, on, on. So when I pull the lever, it turns on. Okay, pretty simple. And I've imported a, uh, I created created a voice file and imported it and activated it. And I have a one second delay. Now that we have that flight mode, we can go to our base menu, go to control set, 
And here's a really important thing. Um, you want to make sure that in all your flight modes uh, for your flap, there's no control set. So it's blank. Uh, you only want a control set landing. in your landing mode. Normal. And in camber. the, uh, and we're going to want one in the camber mode or the flight mode that you want the variable wing camber in. So let's go ahead and assign um, that control. So we'll just go into uh, camber flight mode, and then we'll hit control, and we'll just move the lever. And we're going to want a one-way throw. And we may or may not have to reverse it, but we'll, we'll see uh, when we get down the line here. So we'll hit OK there. And as as we can see, we have uh, in our camber mode, lever one is now active. So then we're going to want to go to function, uh, wing set, in, in your camber uh, flight mode or phase, you want to go to flap rate. We want to make sure it's on, and it is. And we're going to click on the airplane icon. For the group setting, you want to make sure it's list and not global, so that this setting only applies to your camber flight mode. Again, it is on. And here we have um, our rates that we can input. The first thing we need to do is ensure that this yellow line is in the middle in our camber flight mode. That way we can adjust the rates up and down, or camber and reflex if you want, if you want a reflex. But since we have a uh, just a one-way switch, we're only going to get uh, down camber and not, not reflex, which is what I want for this application. And we can see that the line is not um, in the middle. It's off to one side. So we're not going to be able to adjust our um, rates for our, ca for our variable camber. So let's go back, and we'll go to con uh, base menu and control set. Let's hit the lever, and let's reverse this guy. And now let's see if that line has moved to the middle, and I think it has because you saw the surface pop back up. But we'll go and double check. Again, function, wing set. We're in the camber flight mode, flap rate. Click on the airplane, and here we go. You can see the line is near the middle. So in the normal mode, in all the flight modes, this line should be in the middle. And then in the camber mode, we can see it starts in the middle and moves off to the side. Now we can adjust our rates and get a, a, the amount of camber that we want in the model. Obviously, it's, it's preset to 100. I don't know why it presets to 100. It should be zero, I think, for the preset. But if we pull the lever all the way down, surface is moving in the right direction, but we see we're getting like maximum flap deflection. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our rate. We're going to adjust it down again. We're just going to do like a fictitious amount. I'll do 40%. So now we see when we move our lever, Normal. our flap moves. Normal. Pretty simple once you've got that other stuff figured out. Now let's go and we'll, we'll set up the ailerons to um, match the flaps. So go back to wing set. Okay, we'll go to flap the aileron, make sure it's on, we'll click the airplane, and then we want to make sure that we are in uh, camber flight mode, camber. and we are. I've already put a value in here, but I'll just reset that to the default of 100. Again, make sure this is, uh, the, the group is the list, so it's just uh, for, for the camber flight mode, make sure it's on, and Normal. now we can put a value in for our ailerons to get our ailerons to match the flaps. So let's say 70% is what we need. Now if you watch the trailing edge of the, the model, Normal. we have variable camber, camber set up. Let's go back. And in, in this flight mode, if you have separate trims, you could, you could trim your elevator as required. Or you could even, you know, possibly set up a, a flap to, uh, or camber or flap to elevator, uh, mix to get some down elevator, 
um, with your trailing edge if you would like, or you could just use the trim in your flight mode. So there's the variable, variable camber, and again, you know, we're, we're running into the same problems we talked about before. Um, let's just go back here, camber menu, we'll go to flap, flap rate, click on the airplane. Um, again, you only have one, one value to adjust, right? So you cannot adjust each surface individually. Really, there needs to be four rates here. There needs to be, you know, left flap rates up and down and right flap rates up and down. It's just, it, it had, the radio has to have that, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's it, it can, it can be very frustrating. Um, same thing with the ailerons in the in the camber menu uh, or any of them any of the menus for that for that matter flap the aileron um there should be four rates uh left flat left aileron right aileron to be able to match up your surfaces but regardless uh we have variable camber set up now so we we've, we've covered a lot with the um the sailplane programming you know, um, we've got our flight modes, our flight mode delays. Uh, we have our, our camber settings, our fixed camber settings. Thermal. We can go to thermal mode. Normal. Speed mode. Again, these are all presets. Normal. Speed. F3J launch mode. Launch. Speed. And we have a variable... We have variable camber on a slider if we need that. I've really moved away from using variable camber. Um, I've really gone to presets, but some people still like to use variable camber, and uh, that's fine. So that that was uh, Grotner MZ32 Sailplane Programming Part Two. I think I really covered everything I need to cover for you guys to get a you know a pretty good setup in for, in your glider with this radio. Again, the, uh, the, the camber menus and not being able to adjust each individual surface and the phase trims and the flap rates and the flap to aileron menus is just, you know, in my opinion, a huge drawback to this radio. Uh, I remember in 1993, you know, I'm not that old, but I guess I'm a little old. In 1993, I had an Airtronics Vision radio, you know, an old FM or PCM radio, whatever it was. And it had uh, individual um, settings for all the flight surfaces. So that radio from 1993 is more capable than this radio. So, um, yeah, it's it's a shame. I really hope Grapner comes out with a software update to address these issues. Um, I also want to say that the flight mode delays are, are, are irritating to me as well. There should be a delay in and out. You know, I, I, I would like... I would like to be in launch mode, go into speed quickly, go into normal with a delay, and then when I'm in normal mode, I'd like to come back to speed with a delay, not instant. But I can't do that with this radio because it's just a one way. It's just a one way delay in all the flight modes. It really needs to be a, a two way delay. Okay, so um, that wraps it up, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave comments. Um, I think I've gone over everything I need to go over. The only other thing I think I'll uh, maybe take a look at and do another video on is the uh, um, motor setup for a uh, powered glider or F5J glider. Hopefully I'll be able to do that soon. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.